What did Paul realize after he saw the risen Jesus? That all of that was getting the spiritual life pretty much precisely backward. What's really at the heart of it? That God, through a sheer grace in Christ, goes to the limits of God-forsakenness to find all of us sinners, Everybody who's got a thorn in the flesh, everyone who feels weak and inadequate, everyone that feels unworthy, God goes to the limits of God-forsakenness and in His grace finds them. Well, I'm just back from my Ad Limina Apostolorum visit. That's the visit to the threshold of the apostles, meaning the tombs of Peter and Paul, and then, of course, a visit also with the successor of Peter. So the first day of the uh, Ad Limina, we went to the tomb of Peter. The last day, we went to the tomb of Paul. And though I'd been there before, uh, I found myself just really, uh, in an unexpected way, moved by that experience. So we had Mass, and all of us bishops were in full liturgical regalia with mitres and everything. And then we went down after Mass to what's called the Confessio, a little area below the floor. And there you can see the sarcophagus of St. Paul. And there we knelt in this regalia, uh, praying. And I'll confess to you a certain feeling, not quite of shame, but of just unworthiness. As I knelt there in the regalia of a bishop and thinking, Am I in any way worthy to be called a successor of the apostles, a successor of, of St. Paul? But then as I, I prayed further, and I thought it was kind of a, maybe the grace of the Holy Spirit, uh, I was reminded of how often Paul himself felt unworthy. So the risen Jesus appeared to him, and he knew he was an apostle, he'd been sent. But at the same time, he felt, I, I'm, I'm unworthy of this because I've been a great persecutor of the church. Yes, apostle to the Gentiles, but he had spent the first uh, part of his life studying the great tradition and then, and then persecuting the church, so he felt unworthy of it. He also says that uh, even though he has a mission of proclamation, he felt that he wasn't impressive in physical appearance and especially in speech. It's a bit like, um, like Moses, you know, felt that he wasn't a, a proper spokesperson, so Paul felt, you know, why should I be given a ministry of proclamation? And then a famous text where Paul speaks about the thorn in his flesh. What was it? You know, a physical ailment of some kind, maybe? A psychological struggle of some kind, maybe? A, a spiritual feeling of inadequacy? Who knows what it was? But Paul says, three times I begged you, Lord, that you take it away from me. And that's kind of code for, I begged you over and over and over again. So this unworthy, uh, suffering uh, figure, uh, incapable, it seems, of the task he was given, that was St. Paul. And the beautiful response to his prayer, you know, about, uh, Lord, take this away from me. And the Lord says, uh, no, in your weakness, my power reaches perfection. And so... Christ's grace is enough for Paul. And so in that moment, I felt this kind of identification with, with Paul. Even in my feeling of unworthiness, it's what he felt too. I didn't think at the very heart of Paul's theological teaching is a teaching about the primacy of grace, free gift. So the young Saul on fire, zealous, he says, for the traditions of his fathers, had studied the tradition under uh, Gamaliel, the great uh, teacher, and then sets out on this career of fulfilling the Jewish law so to the letter that he'd become pleasing to God. Through his own efforts, becoming pleasing to a somewhat difficult and distant God. What did Paul realize? after he saw the risen Jesus, that all of that was getting the spiritual life pretty much precisely backward. What's really at the heart of it? That God, through a sheer grace in Christ, goes to the limits of God-forsakenness to find all of us sinners, 
Everybody who's got a thorn in the flesh, everyone who feels weak and inadequate, everyone that feels unworthy, God goes to the limits of God forsakenness and in His grace finds them. That's the beginning for Paul of a properly ordered spiritual life. I think of, uh, of Paul Tillich, the 20th century theologian, who summed this up by saying, accepting the fact that you've been accepted even though you're unacceptable. That's what Paul would call justification or being set right. Okay, I say it's the beginning of a properly ordered spiritual life because now, now, once you stand in the presence of that grace, what can you do? And see, Paul did it, is you can take everything in you, your strengths and your weaknesses, and turn all of that over to be in service of Christ's grace. So, did Paul abandon his zeal? No, he turned it into zeal for the proclamation of the gospel. Did Paul abandon his intellectual energies? No, you see them all over his letters. They're now in service of Christ. The Council of Trent talks about justification, but then increase in justification. And what do they mean? They mean once we've surrendered to the grace of Christ, now we can give everything in us, strength and weakness, and find all of that even more uplifted, transfigured, elevated. We're increased in our friendship with the Lord. So that's what I get finally from that uh, experience, is as I knelt before the tomb of Paul, feeling unworthy, feeling inadequate, Okay, so did he. But turn that, as well as what's strong and good in me, turn all that over to Christ and let him use it for his purposes. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you'll never miss another new commentary.